Welcome back to We Do Pay It Forward. Today's episode will be with Jill Deuce of Daughter Creative, award-winning agency, and you'll get to hear her story about leading with empathy. Welcome. I'm Elena Radakovic, and this is We Do Pay It Forward. Jill, I'm so excited you are able to be here and share your amazing story because you just won third best creative agency in Canada. Yeah. Like what an amazing honor that is. I'm sure there's tons of stories that you probably have of the good and the bad <laughs> of how you become like one of the best agencies in uh, Canada. Why don't you tell us one of like an amazing story that probably you cried and you laughed at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so this was a really great sort of honor for us. We're a small agency, so we're 14 people at the moment, but we were 12 at the time that we won. And we entered a competition, which is a national competition, where you have to submit um, your best work and they judge you based on three case studies that you submit. So we submitted for best design agency and also best small agency, which is advertising side. And we got shortlisted for both, which was incredible. We were wow. sort of pinching ourselves to get shortlisted to the top 10. And when we got shortlisted for two categories, we decided we probably should fly out to Toronto to the awards ceremony because it was just being shortlisted twice felt like an honor. Wow, it's huge. So we went yeah. out and Kelly Pollock, our creative director and myself flew out to Toronto. We had to fly back very early the next morning for a pitch. So it was a, a last minute sort of decision. But we went out and um, early in the night, we got a medal in design agency, which is a design agency of any size. So the winner of that category was an agency called Rethink, who are enormous and extremely successful. So we felt so honored just to be up on the stage with these big agencies. And we, we got up on the stage and we yelled, go Calgary. And we sort of <laughs> tried to promote Love our city it. at the same time. And then later on in the night, we won a bronze for small agency as well, which is any agency under 50 people. So to be 12 people at the time and to win the giant category and then the small category it's bronze so we've got some we've got some goals to improve but we were so excited and that's, it just felt like such an honor that's incredible yeah small and mighty <laughs> yes. small, mighty. I, know it's, I, I say the same thing for my team we're small and mighty yeah. so congratulations thank that's you so much absolutely fantastic so what uh what hurdles did you go through I mean, how long have you been in business now? So daughter just turned seven in February of this year. So we've just hit that really nice stride of the business where the first sort of three years, you're figuring out what you're even doing and how to run a business. The next couple of years, I feel like you're building your contact list. You have your own portfolio of work rather than work you've done in previous roles. And then this year, I feel like we've really settled into a vision and sort of a purpose. So it, it's it's been, we started the agency just before the economic recession, and then we sort of grew it through the pandemic, which was, was really lucky. We're one of those industries where the pandemic didn't have such a negative effect on us from a business point of view, obviously took emotional toll on, on everybody. But I think we really, we've hit that stride where we're at a really great size. We're sort of poised to grow. And now we've got these big decisions to make on what does growth look like and how do we scale? And so tell us about the process that you're going through right now, mm -hmm. because there, um, a lot of our listeners are probably in the same stage where um, they've gone through the pandemic, mm -hmm. they've got their nice core team, and now they're looking to grow and expand. Yeah. So walk us through the process and, and maybe some of the key learnings that our audience can take away from. Yeah, that's a great question. I think we've always... Steph, Steph, who's my business partner and, and the founder of Daughter and one of our creative directors as well, she and I always sort of say we're so fiscally conservative. So we've, we've never taken on any debt. We've tried to be really um, responsible with the way we run the business. And I think we're always two hires behind what we need to be. So we've had that lovely problem of too much work, not enough people. Mm -hmm. And this year we've really decided that we can't carry on like that. That's, that creates just such a stressful environment for the people who work with us. People love their jobs, but we're asking a lot of them. Right. So I think this year we're really trying to get in front of kind of the talent crisis. So we're really actively recruiting people. We're trying to develop a really great pipeline of talent so that 
when a client does come in, we can staff up really quickly. And our industry has changed so much. In the old days, I started 25 years ago in New Zealand, most agencies had agency of record relationships with a client where you sign a contract for three to five years with a guaranteed income, you staff accordingly and, and off you go. And now most of the work is project by project. So most clients use multiple agencies, they use a specialist for different areas of their business, which is great but it makes forecasting and resourcing and recruiting really difficult because you're never quite sure if the work's coming in to support the talent. But we're starting to finally back ourselves and say, we can do this, let's get ahead of the hiring and, and staff up now. Yeah, no, I know that right now in our industry, I think um, especially post pandemic, mm -hmm. hiring is, is quite a struggle right now. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, I mean, uh, I myself, I was, just, I'm, I think, very similar being yeah. on the conservative side because you never know what what the neck yeah. hic next hiccup is going to happen so um i think um, a lot of our uh, listeners here uh, are going to probably going through the same thing now are you hiring within are you using an agency We've done a bit of both. So we have a really good profile in Calgary. So when we put out a job posting on our social media, on our website, um, we tend to get a fair amount of responses, which is great. I think we're really looking for, in the past we hired people like us. And I think a lot of business owners do that. You're attracted to people who are similar to you. But one of the things we've really realized is we need more diverse perspectives. So we can't, we can't add people that are the same as our culture. We need people who challenge the culture and take it in a different direction. And we've really found that those people are coming from different geographies. So we've been doing a lot of work on trying to entice people from Toronto to move out west. Right. Um, there's been some great uh, sort of marketing recently of Alberta, which has been helpful. Yes. So people are starting to change their opinions. But we're really we're working with a recruiter in Toronto and a lot of our creative talent in the copywriting and art direction side, we're looking at Toronto. So Calgary has Alberta University of the Arts and they have a design program. So we have a great pool of designers in Calgary. But when it comes to advertising creatives, we don't have an advertising school out here. So we're a bit thin on the ground for people who want to move agencies. So we're looking sort of out east to, to bring people from out there. You gave a really interesting tip. So um, I personally have always said, you know, culture is number one mm -hmm. and trying to hire people who mesh into your culture. But it's interesting, you said somebody who challenges mm -hmm. the, the culture. I have to think about that. That's a really interesting yeah. point. I, I I really enjoyed listening to that. It is. And we have, we have a business coach that we've used for a long time and we have a set of corporate values and everybody that we hire does a little sort of personality test well it's, it's a behavioral sort of assessment okay, right and and it's whether they align with the things that we hold the most dear is what we look at like so, your core values yes so okay. are they values aligned but culturally if they're a chat if they're different if they if they operate in a different way, okay. then that's, that's something we can definitely work with. It's values alignment that we're sort of looking for. Can you share with the, our audience, um, what, what is the, like I, I've used strength, strength binders, yeah. I've used this. What, what do you use for, uh, so for that? So it's a colors assessment. Oh, it's, we okay, use a, a yes. guy called Shane from Culture Smith in Calgary, okay. and it's an amazing sort of uh, yellow, red, blue, green colors assessment. Okay. So it, it sort of, helps us it's almost like an operating manual for each of the people in our agency it's kind of related to disc as far right. as i can tell because oh, i've done the myers-briggs and all those things as well but we we when we first went through this process we realized a lot of our agency was coming out the same and it was ah, like oh the same color yeah so we're all operating in from the same sort of way and we okay. need people who are you know challenging that and adding and sort of making us more well-rounded i think oh yeah wonderful i think when you're young you're like i'm going to start a business and work with all my best friends and it's like that's not a great way to run a business. Jeez. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah. No, that's very smart. Yeah. So, what what are you excited about your business going forward now? Um, I think we have really decided to focus in on our city, which is really lovely. I think for a while we we thought we're going to take on the world and we're going to get U.S. clients and we're going to go global. And we've really there's something happening in Calgary that we're really excited about. And I think. Focusing on the city is easier to get our staff engaged because everybody lives here and they want the city to right. succeed. But there's this amazing thing happening with the energy transition where we've worked with a lot of oil and gas companies like every agency in Calgary. But there's a lot of really smart people making technology products mm -hmm. that are sort of ancillary to oil and gas. 
And I've heard some amazing stories when I do new business calls where people are telling me about their product, but that product will never kind of get the impact it needs without the right sort of branding and advertising. That's right. So there's this role that we feel we can play to take these amazing products and services and really kind of make them shine and show them to the world. And in doing that, we sort of show Calgary as this hub of smart, innovative technology, but also that creativity is kind of an economic driver, that you're not spending on brand, you're investing, right. but you're investing in this. And this is something that is a platform for your, your company. I always say, you know, um, a lot of people say, oh, I have a great product. It's going to sell itself. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> it may. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I agree with you having the correct brand and, and creating your brand guidelines mm -hmm. for everything that you do right now, from yeah. digital marketing to promotions, to events, you, it, it's so imperative. And for your team, yeah. your team needs to be proud of the brand that they're representing as well. Yeah. And we found that as well. We've, we've done some rebrands of companies recently where the branding has actually really help them from a recruitment point of view because suddenly the company feels more dynamic. The story was always there, but the story wasn't being told. So we rebranded Transalta last year, really incredible company, 110 years old, but nobody knew that they'd gone fully renewable in Canada. So they weren't, nobody really knew who they were because they're not a consumer facing product, but they had this amazing impact on what's happening with energy in North America and Australia. And the story just wasn't sort of being told. They still felt sort of um, like they were stuck in the past. So we, we sort of helped them come into the future with a really dynamic new identity and a voice and an opinion on kind of how they're showing up for the energy transition. And I think that really helps sort of lift their recruitment side as well. Oh, fantastic. Mm. So if being a branding guru, if I can say that, um, what, <laughs> is a, what is a great tip that you can give to um, an entrepreneur who's looking to start up their business or an established uh, entrepreneur who's trying to think if their brand needs like a refresh? Yeah. What, what's a great tip or steps that they need to take? It's a great question. And I think um, we, we focus a lot on empathy at Daughter. And one of the things we ask every business is what problem are you solving for a person? So why does your brand exist? I, I get that you want to sell X number of widgets or X number of subscriptions, but what, what is the actual problem happening now in the world? And how are you showing up for somebody? So we're in an attention economy where we're asking for people's attention. People are so distracted. They're so mm. exhausted after yes. the pandemic. Right. I mean, I think everybody just wants to be hugged. <laughs> but how does your brand show up and, and help somebody express something they can't articulate themselves or show their values or solve a problem in their lives? And if you can't say that, then I think it's, it's difficult for us to tell the story with, with a degree of empathy. We talk about kind of what's percolating in the zeitgeist. So what's happening culturally and socially in the world right. and how does your brand kind of tie into that? So you can be topical and timely, but you still need to have this kind of, um, this underpinning of, of why you show up in the world. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Jill. Okay. I hope you wrote down all of those <laughs> tips. So if you're looking to start a business or your business itself, think about that. What solution are you solving for and your yeah for your clients for for your potential clients Jill this has been wonderful how can someone get a hold of you a potential client yeah. or somebody in the audience get a hold of you and uh, daughter creative great so we are at daughtercreative.com and you can email hello at daughter creative as well you can find us on LinkedIn and um, we have a really interesting Instagram feed that shows a lot of our current work as well so yeah send me an email hello at daughtercreative.com Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here and stay tuned for more. Thank you to our sponsor, Christine Dejeuner with Brightwire Leadership for paying it forward and ensuring that women leaders are heard. If you are inspired and want to join the We Do community, then go on WeDoCanada.com and also nominate and sponsor the next inspirational woman.